Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let there be joy as we celebrate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who reigns forevermore. Let's praise Him, church. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Seals and plays repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, a speakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Joy, joy, and speak up, joy, and overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Rises in my soul, never lets me go. Sing it again, joy, joy, and speak up more joy. Oh, thank you, Lord. No overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, joy, and speak up more joy. It rises in my soul.
Wow, what a Christmas, right? I have entitled this Christmas Candle. I don't have a monitor here. Okay. Hola. Oh. Okay, Christmas Candle. Is there such thing as a scandal in Christmas? Maybe this is the first time we click oh may scandal bless a Christmas. Well, maybe this is the first time, but you know the first Christmas was not as nice and pretty as you probably thought it was. Every time we have Christmas, ang ato niyang thinking with nice gift giving and all the merry making and all the eating. But during the first Christmas, it was not exactly like that. In fact, for many people, it was probably a very frightening event in Bethlehem. Why so? Siling nila, Bethlehem was the most dangerous place during Christmas time at the time. Why? Especially if you happen to be a baby, newly born baby, below two years old. And we are going to know the reason why. And the reason is because there was a man who tried to kill Christmas 2,000 years ago. I know this is a strange story. It should not be in the Bible. It does not match up the glorious happening in the Bible Christmas time. And so when you read it, makasiling ikaw, dapat wai ni siya tani, diri. Okay, Christmas is supposed to be a glorious time. The angels announcing the good news. The shepherds were there, Mary and Joseph, and the wise men were there. But this portion of the Bible should not be there. Dapat wala ni siya kay, it is something we should not be reading on Christmas time. It does not sound right. I don't think even nga uh, naka-attend ikaw Christmas carols or Christmas concert and talking about this portion of the Bible. And this story in the Bible is a story about the baby boys that were slaughtered in Bethlehem. That's why it's a scandal because there was murder during the first Christmas time. Normally, you don't talk about this. When was the last time you talk about the babies that were slaughtered on Christmas Day? Not there. Hindi ka man kabati siguro na kanta ta na di. Oh, they were slaughtered. Hallelujah. Nothing there. But it's in the Bible. It's right there. It's just so real. Very, very real. In the same way that Mary and Joseph were there and the angels appeared to them. And this is a very real story. And the only problem here is because this is exactly the opposite of the most joyful event in the history of mankind. In fact, it was the fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 2. 16 to 18, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel, probably the name of the, one of the mothers, weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. You can't imagine what was happening there, no? You cannot even give comfort to the mothers. Why? I mean, kung ikaw isa ka iloy at the time, you were just having a night's sleep, and all of a sudden, here comes the soldiers ni Herod to cut your baby in the middle of the night, raise his, uh, probably his legs, whatever, his feet, and chop him just like that in front of you. And it, it, it shouldn't be there in the Bible. Dapat wala ni siya, provide ni siya gina istorya. Over and over again. What happened to those babies? But it happened. And this is part of the whole scandal of Christmas. Very true. In other words, on that evening, one part was rejoicing, and the other part it was weeping. Rachel. And now sometimes when you read the Bible, mga amuni. Dapat you put yourself there in the story. Kaya kapag hindi mo siya pag-ibutang dira, you can read this event, you can pass through Christmas, and never really see what happened there. But once in a while, you sit down and, what happened here? Nano ini siya? How come ang mga babies ini? Can we have Christmas without the murder? 
I mean, puede, correct? I mean, if you read the scriptures and do away with the murder, then we can have Christmas. But why would God ever put murder on Christmas Day? Puede gitane, puede get. This is really a shocking story recorded in the Bible. So the question is, there has to be something here. There has to be something here that God wants us to know. And I know you know this, and it's a very simple outline that we can have as we begin to approach Christmas. Why would God allow a storm before Christmas? Why not? Why would God allow murder on Christmas Day? Well, he has a lesson for you and me. In the same way, if you remember about a year ago when I started my first preaching on COVID, the reason why God allowed COVID and the reason why God allowed murder on Christmas Day is point number one. To portray to us the sinfulness of the human heart. To show to you and me the power of evil in the human heart. Sometimes we don't see it that way. Kung tanaon tagi ng istorya, it is just a sense of evil there. How could somebody kwa on yung bata mo and chop him in front of you? I mean, that's evil. That's barbaric. Why would God put it there? So how would you explain that? It's very inhuman. It does not have to be there. It's a picture of Hitler. It's a picture of Stalin. Probably it's a picture of Saddam, Hus Saddam Hussein and all of those evil people there. Well, probably it can help you a little bit. And you know the whole story here is about Herod. When Herod gave the instruction to kill those babies below two years old, guess what? He was already very old. He was already 70, 71 years old, and he had about 40 years as a king, very brutal and cruel king. And he knew that he was getting old and dying. He had a few years to live. However, for the last 40 years, Herod was known to be very clever and cruel at the same time. In fact, ginatawag na siya Herod the Killer. That's his name. I mean, he can just kill anybody he wants, especially those who want to threaten his throne. Even at the age of 70, anybody who will threaten his throne needs to go. He has to die. You can imagine, you know what he did? He killed his own brother-in-law. Anyone here who did that? Don't raise your hand, of course. He killed his own mother-in-law. Anyone who did that, don't raise your hand. Guess what? He killed his own wife. And not only that, two of his sons from his wife, he had ten, by the way. It was just a rumor that they heard that these two brothers were planning to overthrow his throne. Guess what? He had both of them strangled to death. That's Nero. I mean, that's Herod. You see that? So that's how barbaric he was. Even at that age, he still wants to kill. That's his nature. He killed out of spite, and he killed to stay in power. In other words, human life meant nothing to him. So he was called by different names. He was a maniac. He was a pervert. All kinds, all kinds. You cannot imagine nga imo bata nga duwa. Kay just na batian mo nga they had plans to overthrow you. Both of them struggled to death. You can imagine, no nga kung ano. Ang lain pagid, according to Caesar Augustus, siling niya, it is safer to be Herod so than his son. Amo na kalain nga klasi tao si Herod. Mas maayo pang baboy gili to be his son. Kay he can kill you anytime. He can kill you anytime. In other words, killing was what he did best. Some critics say that this is not part of the Bible. They could not accept the fact that there was murder during Christmas time. 
but it's so real. Kung basta ako tayo, it's so real. Those babies were slaughtered. How many? We don't know. However, there is something here that fits every human nature about Herod and you and me. It's so easy to read about a man like Herod, and then you turn him into a monster or classify him into a monster. I mean, this is the kind of person he was. He was barbaric. He was cruel. Very easy, very easy. And we normally do that sometimes with people. We, don't, we do that most of the time with politicians because these are who they are. So we put them on a different classification and these are the kind of people they are. We do that most of the time. But what's the truth here? The truth is something you don't like to hear. Herod, most of the time, was just as normal as any of us. There were times he was a normal human being. According to history, there were times that he was so kind. And there were times that he was so generous with people. Can you imagine? And that's what history said about him. So what's the difference between Herod and us? What's the big difference? I want to say something which you don't like. Are you ready? The big difference between Herod and us is that he had the power to carry out his evil intentions. Big difference. Yep. In other words, he was just like you and me. But given the right circumstances, given the right power, who knows we can also do the same and even worse. And that's why when we criticize people, when we judge people, hagan-hagan lang kita. You will never know what you can also do apart from the grace of God. Amen. Can you find yourself criticizing people as if you are better than they are? Oh, well, well, well. Slow down a little bit. I'm going to tell you a story written by Chuck Colson, the Watergate scandal. He wrote a column about the, in 1961, the famous Nuremberg trial. And this was a trial for the famous Nazi Adolf Eichmann. Are you familiar with the word Eichmann? He was the one who planned the systematic destructions of six million Jews. This was the guy, Nazi Adolf Eichmann. And not only the six million Jews and even more, he was responsible for that. He was the brainchild of Hitler who planned all of these. And so right after the war, he disappeared. No one knew where he was. And so he was tried in absentia. A survivor by the name of Yohil Dinur testified against Eichmann and a few more. And of course, they found him guilty. That's the famous Nuremberg trial. Years later, the Israeli intelligence caught up with Eichmann and they found him hiding in Argentina. And so they took him, they returned him to, to Israel for the trial. And on that day, this guy who was a survivor at concentration camp, see Yael Dinur, testified against Eichmann. And then they showed Eichmann in person, all right, in the courtroom. And this guy, Yehel Dinur, cried uncontrollably. And everybody was surprised. To the point that he fainted. And so the news reporter asked him, what happened? How come you fainted when you saw him in person? Was it fear? Was it your memories? What happened here? What happened? You know what he said? He explained that during the war, if you have seen Eichmann, you would fear him, his aura, 
he had this Nazi glory in him. When he wears that uniform, he is evil and nothing more. He's just so evil. You mean to kill six million Jews, that's the aura that you have. And so everybody who would see him would fear him. But on that morning when he saw Eichmann, a changed man, no more uniform, no more Nazi glory, nothing, an ordinary man, he fainted. Kabalukano siling ya? When you saw Eichmann, this is what he said. I was so afraid about myself. I saw that I am capable to do this. I am exactly like him. That's why he collapsed to the floor. And so the news reporter came up with a column. And this is what they said. Eichmann is in all of us. You cannot imagine, kung hindi lang sa bugay sang ginoo, given the right circumstances, given the right power, we would also do the same. Don't you think so? Don't you think so? I think this is the central truth about human nature. You know, sin is not just in us. It's not just the temptation to sin, or it's not just the propensity to sin, but sin in us. I know we don't like to hear this kind of stories, like the slaughter of the infants of Bethlehem. Why? Because it forces us to confront the truth about who we really are. Romans chapter 3, 22, Slaney Paul. There is actually no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So kung hindi lang galit sa bugay sang ginoo, we would even do things worse than what he did. So sometimes when we are being driven to judge or criti criticize other people, uh, I would say, hagan-hagana. Okay, base kung ikaw magli sa ilang position, sobra pa. Oh, we, we say, but you see, you go back to the Word of God. You know what does the Word of God say in 1 Corinthians? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Those without Christ, the message is foolishness. It doesn't mean anything. You see, it does not mean anything. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, listen to this, verse 14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, for he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, we keep on criticizing other people. They don't understand this. They don't understand Ang problema, kilala mong ginoo, and you do these things. That would be a big problem. You know, when you look at the Word of God, kaluluoy, we should have more compassion sa ila. In fact, we should be praying for them because they don't know the Lord Jesus. Do I hear an amen? So instead of judging and criticizing, we should be praying more for them. Do I hear an amen? Because the Word of God says, look, they don't know the Lord. They're blind. They're foolish. For them, these things are foolish. Simba, simba, come on. Oh, come on. They don't care. They don't care. So, dapat lukambiuhon nato ng aton nga attitude towards people. You know, okay, why sila kakilala sa ginoo? Dapat, kita ya dapat, nga nakakilala, lain ang aton niya dapat ang attitude. Second Corinthians, for example, let me see, chapter 4. Oh, no. Chapter 4, verse 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. You can't imagine that. They, have, they are blind. They can't see the truth. That's why they're doing what they're doing. Because they cannot understand. They don't have the power. They don't have the capacity to see these things. They're governed by evil. They're governed by sin. You know, so it's useless to do that. So the most that we can do is you pray for them that makilala nilang ginoo. 
You know, I think we should spend our time more for that. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. You know, so when we catch ourselves sometimes we do this, must like, oh, sorry, Lord, I should have more compassion for these people. Ano man yang sagad ko kasi sa sila, kaya kung ako magali guru, magtungtong da, sobra pang kawaton ko. Amen. Oh, kung ikaw guru, nga way mga kilala sa ginoo, kag amutungtongan kasi na da, basi sobra pang kawaton mo. You see that? So we should be praying for them and not just criticizing them. I'm not saying that what they're doing is right. But we should be praying for them. And this is the whole point. I think that God has to allow this story to be a part of Christmas. Therefore, there is no difference between Eichmann and Yahil. There is no difference between Hero and you. And me, there's no difference between these evil people and us. Okay, amuna kung given the right situation lang, given the right power, basi himo onta masubra pa sa nsa ila. That is why mapasalamat kita, nagrasyahan, nagil kita sa ginoo, kag nakilala ta siya. Amen? Because apart from the grace of God, believe me, no sin we won't commit. I mean, that should put us in the right perspective. Pala. Then we go to the second point. Because of this human nature, that's the very reason now, number two, that Christ has to be born. That's the whole point. He came for our sins. He came because there is so much evil here. And so the slaughter of the infants only remind us again and again and again why he has to come on Christmas Day. And so when the angel told Joseph about Mary's pregnancy, he gave an instruction to give him the name Jesus, Matthew 1.21. It says, because he will save his people from their sins. You see that? That's the reason why he came. <laughs> And I hope people understand Christmas. This is Christmas. He came for our sins, not just to have a merry, merry, merry Christmas exchange gift and have Santa Claus all over. No, definitely not. He came to save us from our sins. And then the angel told the shepherd to fear not. Why? Because in the town of David, a savior a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So primarily, he came for this. He came for this. Now, as we celebrate Christmas, do we see it that way? Oh, he came to give us a gift, gift, gift. Of course, he gave his life. For God so loved the world. But primarily he came to be the savior of the world. Ang problema is this. When you don't understand this. Unless you admit that you are a sinner. You don't need Jesus. Because he's a savior. If you think you can go to heaven on your own merit. There is no point in celebrating Christmas because Christmas is all about a person, a Savior who came to save us from our sins. That's Christmas. But if you think, ah, I'm okay, I can go to heaven on my own merit, you don't need a Savior, then don't celebrate Christmas because Christmas is about a Savior who came to die for you and me. Therefore, the slaughter of the babies is a perpetual reminder why he came. He had to be born. He had to be born. And that is what Christmas is all about. I wonder if you celebrate Christmas next week, 
Will Jesus ever be part of your dinner time? Will you ever even mention his name on dinner time? I challenge you, read Luke chapter 2 before dinner time. I challenge you, as I've been trying to challenge you every year, especially kamu mga tatay, take up the leadership. Tindog ko ang Bible. Read Matthew 2 or Luke chapter 2 antes ka mo mapanyapon. At least naman, may insindihan sa inyong pamilya why He has to come. You know, Tingnan na ang mga taan, hindi na pagabrihan ang inyong gift kung hindi nyo may insindihan why Jesus came. Well, I hope you will do that because Christmas is all about you. Christmas is all about the shepherds. Christmas is all about the wise man. Christmas is all about, guess what, Herod. Christmas is all about those babies who died. Christmas is all about those mothers and fathers who lost their babies. Because again, in the end, there is no difference. We are all sinners desperately in need of a Savior. Amen? Amen? That is why the story is there. Para madumduman natin how evil, evil is. Kaya kung hindi mo makita how evil, evil is, then there is no point in this cross. Ah, okay lang na. Sorry lang for you. You died there. Sorry for you. No! He came for you to take your place on the cross. Then it changes everything. Your Christmas. Okay na lang na kung madulaan sa mga amo mo ni. Okay lang na yung bagyo na lang na Okay lang. Importante nga, we know the meaning and purpose of Christmas. That's all that matters. Maybe this could be God's design that once in a while, kakason niya na yung mga frills and thrills ng kalibutan nun ta para makafocus man ta sa iya. Isang una, during pre-pandemic, sobra ang kwarta. We don't remember Jesus. I mean, let's face it. Who can remember Jesus during those times? Could it be God's wisdom that he has to slowly take away the thrills and the frills on Christmas so that we can have more time for him just to remember him? And thirdly, the reason why this story, the massacre of the children has to be there for the protection of God's Providence. What do I mean? You see, when we talk about God's providence, is that the doctrine we teach us are that God is in control of every detail. You know that. We have been talking about that for several weeks. God is in control of every detail of the universe. And not only that He is in control of every detail, but even the tiniest detail of your life and mine which sometimes we don't understand, but he knows and he is in control. Yes, he is. Therefore, kung tanawon mo ni ang nakatabo sa kalibutan subong, everything in the universe fits into his great master plan. It's not the way we understand it. It's not the way we look at it. It's not the way it looks as if, no, no, kita maglantaw, ay nano ni man, nga agin padalaan niya naman ni Bagyo, Pag oh, may COVID pa, abin naman, pahuway na kami sa December, bagyo pa. Well, you, do you know that it's part of God's master plan? Yep. And so we need to understand in the story oh, from a bigger context. Na ano ang natabo? There was so much movement when Jesus was born. Tanawan nyo ni, this way. Kadamo sa movement. Joseph and Mary, they were engaged. Wow. And then she conceived, that was a scandal in their culture. Wow. Paano na ni Joseph ibatunon? Paano na ibatunon sa society? And what is going to happen here? And then they need to travel. And she was about three days, bata na siya. And she has to ride on a donkey. That's stressful. Stressful. And by the time they got there, no room in the inn. Whoa, he is God. He could have made a reservation. No, he did not. No room for the king. And they ended up in the manger, in the cave, I believe. Why would God allow that? And you know how 
stressful it is. You don't have all the equipment to give birth. But it happened. And then there were so many things going on. As you read Matthew 2, 12 to 23, he mentions here four separate dreams from God. The first one was the warning to the Magi to return home in another way so that they can escape the evil Herod. And another dream was Joseph and Mary to go to Egypt. You can imagine in the middle of the night, Alsa Baluta, hindi to grab danke ang inyong sakyan. Ano man, may tubig ka nga dalon, may ano, I don't know, paano to, but they have to travel. And they have to stay in Egypt for a while, and then another dream to tell them you can now return, and another dream to tell them that, you know, you have to go another way. What is happening here? And all of these were a fulfillment from the Old Testament. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. Al sabaluta na naman. We don't know the story behind this, kung ano nakadako si Jesus. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judah, in Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, having been warned in a dream again. He withdrew to the district of Galilee. Next. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophet that he would be called a Nazarene. All right? All of these, would you believe, is backed up by a prophecy in the Old Testament. Ang tanan tanan sa to. If you read the prophecies about Jesus, there were about 10 prophecies from Isaiah to Hosea to Daniel to the book of Numbers, and all of these, all pointing to what will happen to Jesus when he was born. In other words, what is the purpose of all this movement? And then here comes the tyrant, Herod. What is happening here? He wants to kill the baby. I mean, he was able to kill hundreds of people. So what about this baby Jesus? Well, do you know what this means? For me, God's plans will never be thwarted. Nope. Herod did everything to kill Jesus, but he could not kill Jesus. He tried. He has 2,000 bodyguards, according to history. But one baby he could not kill. He couldn't. What do you call that? That's the providence of God in action. Maybe you would even ask me, if God warned Joseph and Mary about the intention of Herod, why they did not warn the mothers and the fathers? You want me to answer that? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see in heaven. But I want you to understand this. God always has a bigger plan that we can ever see from where we sit. So when you read scriptures and you say, what is happening here? Why don't you go higher and see the master plan of the Lord? For example, Herod could not kill Jesus in Bethlehem. God has to preserve his son so that one day his son could die on the cross for you and me. You see that? There is no way that Herod can kill him because he was destined for the cross. That's the providence of God. Jesus had to escape Bethlehem so that he cannot escape when it was time for him to die on the cross. That's the providence of God. Jesus escaped the first time so that he will not escape the second time so that you and I would escape hell for all time. So that's how God works. Everything works according to a master plan. Ang problema lang, sometimes we don't see it that way. We see it here in a micro level. And so we ask, you know, what is happening here? But when you move higher, there's a big master plan behind all of this. So what about this senseless slaughter of these little babies? If you happen to be there on that evening, 
and approached the mothers and said, it's okay, it's okay, God has a master plan, it will be senseless. Now, of course, it's a senseless slaughter. Why, my child? Why, why, why? One week later, it never made sense. Ten years later, it never made sense. A decade later, it never made sense. Okay, never made sense. Why these little babies are to die? But when you run the clock 33 years after, Jesus has to die. There is a master plan. And suddenly everything comes out into focus. Because 33 years after, outside the walls of Jerusalem, the man that Herod cannot kill, now this time, has to die for my sins and for the sins of the world and yours too. You know, if he died in Bethlehem, he couldn't have died in Calvary. So may your heart be at rest. Whatever is happening, tanawan you man on the sovereignty part of the God. Everything is moving towards exactly where he wants it to be. Why Bagyo? That's part of the master plan. Why? What? I don't know. You asked him. Sit down and say, Lord, why did you allow? And number four, those babies have to die because of the continuing battle between good and evil. Those babies were considered the first Christian martyrs. In a sense, they symbolize the ongoing battle between good and evil between God and Satan for the full control of planet Earth. Yes, it all started in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve defied God. And from that time on, guess what? Up to this very hour, sin has reigned in every part of our heart. Sin has reigned in every part of our home. Sin has reigned in every corner of this planet Earth. And so kung makita mo niya mga pain and suffering we see around us, all of that you can trace it back into the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve turned their back against God. And since that time, the devil released an army, wave after wave of evil armies, and landed on every home and on every society. That's sin in us. Therefore, kung mag ang time, now when it seems as if the battle is over and evil will reign unmolested forever, in other words, mag ang time as hiling kado ay gitpadaog ang maayuhan sinayaw, though ang evil nagapang ibabaw. Of all the things going on today, and if ever Christmas means having ako niya sa bat, you know what Christmas means? God will always win in the end. If it brings a comfort to you, nga magpamangkot ka, na ano nagkakatabo, may it speak into your spirit, no matter what happens, because Jesus came on Christmas Day, He will always win in the end. In the meantime, we're still here. We just have to put our faith in Him and trust Him that there is a master plan in all of this. Can we understand? No, we cannot understand. And so the same thing is true for those babies that were slaughtered. They died so Jesus could live. Years later, Jesus would die so that they could also live. And so the same battle goes on between good and evil and still continues to the present moment and will continue in the future until the Lord comes again and defeat evil once and for all. And that day will come. Amen? So how do you wrap up this message? What is going to happen here? I have given you four points. The brutal killing of those babies, number one, to show you and me the sinfulness of the human heart. That is why Jesus has to come and then the power of God's providence and the continuing battle of good and evil. He wrote, he tried everything, but he could not. 
And so Herod is now standing as a symbol of the kind of world that Jesus came for. They will never welcome him until today. The world will never welcome Jesus. Why? If they welcome Jesus, their lives will change. They don't want that. Their lifestyle will change. They don't have room in their heart for that. But they will never welcome Jesus in their heart. John 1, 11, He came to what was his own, but his own did not receive him. And so this is the kind of world that does not like Jesus on Christmas Day. Now, they don't want a Savior. They don't need a Savior. So let's put Herod aside. I know that we have talked so bad about Herod. But, madugang lang to something very positive about Herod, if ever there is. You know, kung basahon mo gid siya, may gamay nga positive kay Herod. When the Magi told him about the king of the Jews that will be born, I believe with all my heart, he believed Jesus was the true king. In other words, deep inside him, I believe, I would like to believe, Kabalug, said this is the true king, and I would like to kill him no matter what. He knew about this king coming. Why? He asked his scribes. They knew about the scriptures. And so they told him that a king is going to be born and he's just about five miles away from us. They never bothered to visit him. The wise men, they knew through the prophecies and through the stars that a baby is going to be born. They traveled 800 miles to come and worship him. He rode five miles away from the true king. He does not have time for that. He was too busy for other things. The religious leaders were busy for other things. Five miles away, the king was born. 800 miles away, they came and offered their gift and bowed down before him. What's the point? The point is this. Herod had the information. The wise men also had the information about the king, but they had different responses. Herod had the information. He wanted to kill Jesus. The wise men had the information. They came, bowed down, and worshipped him. So the question is, the in ikaw, are you Herod or are you the wise man? Therefore, I would like to end with this. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God from heaven, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, if you believe that Jesus Christ came to save you from your sins, if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross in your place, if you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, if you believe that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, if you believe that Jesus Christ will one day return to the earth, as King of kings and Lord of lords, you know, if you believe all of that, then we must do as the wise men did. You come with an open heart, bow down before him, and worship him. Let's pray. Lord, it baffles us to know that you included in the Christmas story the slaughter of these babies. But now we know so that we will see ourselves, dear God. If not for your grace, we would have done the same. And Lord, we thank you. It's Christmas. You came and gave your life so that we can also have your life. Lord, it's Christmas time. And probably it's your intent to take away the frills and the thrills of the world so that we can take time to focus on the re- very, very reason why you came. And so, Lord, we lift up to you each and every family here. Maybe there are some in our families who still do not know you and the reason why you came. I pray, dear God, that on Christmas Day, the time, that somehow the story of Christmas will be read in every table, dear God. 
that we can take time to just to listen what happened on Christmas Day. And so I pray for every father and every mother to take the leadership to do that and tell them about your love and tell them about your grace and mercy. And so Lord, give us the ear to hear what you want us to know on Christmas and give us the heart, dear God, to know you more. So bless each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. A blessed Christmas to one and all. Forever and love me, I pray. 